Buddy Walker, his first long beard. He did that! 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 I guess you could say that just turkey hunting something that came naturally around our house. Here comes the man, the strut commander. As you can see, there's a dead bird on the ground. My name is Jordan Summit, and I'm addicted to turkey hunting. <laughs> My name is Rhett Summit. My dad is obsessed with turkeys. Well, not just turkeys, you know, turkey calling around the house and the cars eating turkey, raising turkeys, finding turkeys, hunting turkeys, anything turkey related really. Yeah, he's crazy about turkeys, that's for sure. Come here, come here, come here. Come here, come here, come here. You think with what I do for a living uh, that I had grown up in the woods, but that's actually not the case. Um, I had a great life. It, it brought my mom and dad, great Christian people, and I didn't really even explore hunting until I got older and in college. I met a bunch of guys, and you know, you know how you do in college. You get around, goof around, do stupid things, and we go hunting, and. I kind of always found myself as the guy with the camera. I wasn't necessarily doing the dumb things that were done on camera, but I was behind the camera. Hi, this is Willie Robson with Buff Commander. Jordan, turn the page. Oh, oh. Towards the back end of college, I, I was like, man, this, this camera thing is kind of fun. Um, and, and I explored hunting a little bit, and then I had started watching the Duck Commander VHS tapes. Back then, they were on tapes. There was no DVDs. And, and uh, watch those tapes, and and then uh, was like, man, that'd be really cool to be one of those guys, one of those one of those cameramen, not not one of the duck men. The duck men, man, they were intriguing. Those gritty, raw dudes that biting ducks on the head and and killing cotton mouths and just a lot of cool things and just shooting ducks all over the country. Um, just something that I was like, just obsessed with. It was like, man, I want to be like those guys, but but I knew I couldn't quite be one of those guys because. I didn't have the skill set to be a duck hunter like they, they were. And, uh, but I knew I could run a camera. And so I ended up, you know, uh, sending in an email one day to the, the duckcommander.com website and wasn't really expecting much, to be honest with you. Uh, but I got an email back from a guy named Willie Robertson. And uh, back then, you know, this is back before Duck Dynasty and, and he had said he had just taken over the family business and uh, he was like, man, I happen to go to that same college that you're going to right now. He said, I would love for you to come up and meet the family and, and spend a weekend with us and, and go to church and, and see the land and just see what it's like at Duck Commander. And uh, I came up here for a weekend, brought a couple of my college buddies, and uh, we got to go to church with Phil and Willie and Miss Kay and Corey and just got to see that whole side of things, went, went around and actually got to travel around with Phil, get on the four-wheeler and, and go and check out the property, bust up beaver dams, you know, all that kind of thing. And then, um, anyway, at the end of the summer, he told me he was about to start a new company called Buck Commander. And 
he didn't have a camera guy for Buck Commander was the only problem. He said, I've, I've got this idea. I got a bunch of baseball players and they're really good at deer hunting. And I really want to do with deer what my dad did with ducks, make a very entertaining deer hunting show. And uh, he said, I need a camera guy. Well, here we are. Check us out. It was a big decision, but it's a decision that I'll uh, forever remember and never regret uh, moving down here. Uh, that was 18 years ago. So 18 years later, here we are talking about turkeys. Strut Commander kind of just started out as a time for the camera guys to go out and play. You know those those guys those camera guys have to sit there um, a lot of times it, and they they watch us all year long they rarely get to you know do what i call have fun which is join in on the hunt so strike commander gave them their own avenue to the outdoors and i say them like i'm not one of them i've, I've killed plenty of turkeys oh. that escalated quickly <laughs> Uh oh. Some of us fish, some of us golf, but a couple of us really like to turkey hunt. They're going to do it anyway, so why not film it? Um, kind of the same thing we do with Finn Commander with me and Goblin. We're going to go fishing, so why not film it? We The outdoors to us is not a 60-day duck season. It is where we spend our lives with our families, with our friends. It is what we do. Turkey and then they're spending time with my family and friends and going just going and then in general. You know, in that, in your passions, in your life, in your business, it's still about keeping Phil's first order of things. As honor God. Love your neighbor, whether your neighbor is your wife, your mom, your dad, somebody you don't even know. Neighbor, a very loose term there. And then hunt ducks. That was Phil. Faith family ducks. That was him. But in the outdoors, that doesn't mean that if it's ducks aren't third, who cares? It could be faith family deer, faith family turkeys, faith family fish, just whatever that is, keeping the right order of things, um, keeping things in priority where they should be. Uh, and that's, again, that is something that come from Phil. I will never forget my first turkey. That one right there, put it on his neck, squeeze the trigger. Yes. You smoked him! Yes! You smoked him! <laughs> <laughs> you 
smoked him! Yes! Even though he wasn't that big, it was very important to me because that was the start of like my legacy into turkey hunting. You know, when I think about what turkey hunting has taught me, um, is more about life lessons than actual hunting. Um, my boys, when they first started turkey hunting, you know, I'd tell them to be quiet and, you know, make sure they pick up their feet when they walk and keep grabbing sticks and, and pay attention and and all those little things that I look back on going, man, you know, I was kind of nagging, you know. Stay low. Where's your shooting stick? Grab that real quick. I remember teaching Rhett. Rhett was so bad about dragging his feet when he would walk. Everywhere he'd walk, you'd see his tracks and it was just, looked like somebody on skis behind me. And uh, honestly, he was just trying to keep up. And so he, he was just dragging his feet when he would walk. And I would tell him, hey, you know, stay in my footsteps. Just walk in my footsteps because you can see exactly how I'm stepping. I want you to step just like that. And he would do it and he would drag his feet and I'd get on to him for dragging his feet. You know, to ask him, you know, why can't you keep up? Why can't you stay in line with me and pick up your feet when you walk? And he said, Daddy, I'm trying. I'm trying to step just like you are. And so, you know, that, that right there kind of hit me, and I was like, man, he's just trying to do what I do. I better be careful what I do. And, it, and it's not just in the turkey woods. You know, if I step on a stick, he steps on a stick. It's, it's in life, he's watching what I do. And, and the message that I leave him when I'm gone. It's been, it's just in our blood to go hunting for turkeys and teaching our kids about it. You got him, son! You got him! Slave Walker! Slave Walker! His first long beard! He's dead! Oh, man! Oh, I'm so proud of you. I remember oh. how cheerful everybody was when we showed it to them and it was just such a great day. can do to instill in our kids like values, morals, lessons. We just got done cleaning Rhett's bird and uh, showed him how to breast it out. He's done it a few times. That's where I think I am today is because my dad, all, all the times we spent in, in the woods and uh, you know, we, we didn't, we weren't rich by any means, but it was, as the older I get, I look back and it was not what gun we shot, not the size of the deer we killed, but it was, you know, your first deer, your, um, um, you know, maybe out of state trips or 
time spent at the camp, whatever. So that's what I enjoy now is seeing Jordan with his boys, you know, molding them into young men and all those lessons are being taught. Majority of those lessons are being taught in the woods. And I think that's where some of your most valuable lessons come from. Over the years, uh, we've made so many special memories for my family. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe we have the first strut commandress. I don't know how you quite say that. Uh, my wife's first turkey. Both of my boys, their first turkeys. I've been with both my brothers on their first turkeys. Uh, I've been with several vets on their first birds. I've been with good friends on their first birds. About this turkey stuff. I tell you what, that was awesome. Wasn't that cool? Wow. It's not if we kill a bird. It's, man, did you see that coyote? Did you see that? I've never seen so many armadillos in my life, you know? It's the stories, it's the memories that you can look back on. Um, it's not the biggest turkey. It's not the one that come in gobbling the hardest. It's, uh, it's all those times, all those places we went. Um, so that's, that's the special, um, that's where it's special to me, is, you know, is being able to share that, um, with your buddies, with your family, with your kids, you know. What does legacy mean to you? Like something you can pass on, something that you're like remembered for. Like dad, the legacy of turkey hunting. Our family, a legacy of being involved with turkeys. When people talk about me, when my kids talk about me, I, I really, I just want to be known as a good human, right? Like, I don't want to be known as, man, he was a great duck hunter, man, he was a great this, a great, I just want to be a good human. And what does a good human mean? It means being a good father, being a good husband, um, and just being a good friend. That, that is the legacy that I hope to leave behind because I think if I can accomplish that part, then the rest of the legacy will fall in line with that. Um, I could, you know, I've always said I could care less about being the guy that kills the most ducks or I don't want to be known as the guy who catches the most crappie or the most bass or the most, at the end of the day, I just want to be known as the guy who showed up every day intentionally for his wife, for his kids, for his coworkers, for his friends, just being there, being intentional, being present, and being a good human, somebody you can trust, somebody you can depend on, all those things are, are the legacy that I hope to leave behind. And, and I mean, I think it goes without saying in, in our world, in our businesses, in our brands, the ultimate legacy builder is Jesus. Talking about duck commander, buck commander, strut commander, fin commander, anything with commander in it, it 